In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and the whole region along the Jordan and they were baptized by him in the river confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, <clears throat> who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? <clears throat> Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Don't presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree that doesn't bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He'll baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand. He'll clear his threshing floor. He'll gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Peace. How many of you are parents? How many of you are grandparents? All right, all right. I'll bet you remember the baby's first words. Were you surprised by what the baby's first words were? Whether it was your child or your grandchild? You spend the first part of the baby's life, oh, who knows, six months, nine months, a year, whatever, uh, babbling at the baby, making all kinds of funny faces and speaking words, making sounds. Then one day the baby responds. <clears throat> it's a great feeling <clears throat> to, to hear what the baby has to say. <clears throat> unless the baby's first words are something unexpected. <clears throat> there is a website <clears throat> for the strangest first words. Okay. One woman said her youngest son's first words were, <clears throat> Let go! <laughs> well, she and her husband were puzzled by this until <clears throat> one day they walked into the room and found uh, the, older, <clears throat> the older kids, the two siblings, were playing tug of war. And the, and the toddler was yelling at his older brothers, let go, because <clears throat> they, were, they were trying to pull him around. <clears throat> Another woman said she and her husband would sure, were sure their daughter would say daddy first, and they didn't want their daughter to say daddy first. So they kept practicing Mama, 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 with, with the daughter. And both mother and father were there to witness the child's first word, which was neither Mama nor Daddy, but Bob, the name of their dog. <laughs> yeah. a, a woman uh, from Campbell, Ohio, had the strangest story. Uh, she nags her husband to take the garbage out, probably too much, the day that she and her husband woke up to hear their infant daughter banging her fist on the high chair and yelling, garbage out! <laughs> she knew that was the way to greet her father in the morning. <laughs> garbage out! And that's how John the Baptist preached to people. Get the garbage out! The number one sign that your pastor needs a vacation is when the pastor shows up on Sunday morning and instead of saying good morning, the pastor says, You brood of vipers! 
<laughs> All right, you heathen, listen up. Yeah, if, if you hear a pastor start a sermon like that, it's probably time for the pastor to get away for a while. <clears throat> and this is how John the Baptist was. Get the garbage out. Listen up. Straighten up. All his life, his parents had told him that he had a mission. He was to be the prophet to announce the arrival of the king. Jesus, the Messiah, God's anointed one. John didn't have any excuse to be timid or unsure about what he was to preach. The world was ready for the Messiah. All the Jewish people were waiting for the king to come. The people needed to get ready to see the Messiah, to hear the Messiah, to follow the Messiah. So John's first words were, are you ready? Right? Actually, he said, repent. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Christ is coming. Get the garbage out of your lives and repent. What was the first thing people did when they heard John's message? They confessed their sins because John was talking about repentance. Repent is really an important word in the Bible. Repent was the first word of John the Baptist's message. Repent was the first word of Jesus in both the Gospels of Mark and Matthew. Repent was the first word when Jesus taught his disciples to preach. Repent was the first word in the instructions Jesus gave to his disciples after his resurrection. Repent was the first word in the first Christian sermon in the book of Acts. Repent was the first word of the Apostle Paul in his ministry. Repent is an important word. But we don't hear it much anymore in our society because it's a churchy word. You may not even hear it much more in church. Repent is a Greek word in the Bible that means change your mind. And the interpretation is usually to, to turn around. You're going in one direction and you need to stop and turn around and go in the other direction. To, to make a change. And it, it comes from the idea of planning, trying to get someplace, you're moving along, but you think, I need to go the other way. That's why it's a change of mind. John is challenging his hearers, are you ready to meet God? Are you ready for the king to come to your house? Maybe it's time to repent and change your mind, change your understanding, change your way, so you'll reflect God's mind and the purposes that the king has for you. So get the garbage out is the first step. Uh, cleaning things up, getting things ready. A forest ranger in Britain wrote an article about uh, problems that forest rangers have. Uh, he said, many people come to the park to hike. They have beautiful trails through the forest, trails designed to display the beautiful trees and plants and let the hikers encounter uh, wildlife at its best, to take them to hilltops for breathtaking views of the countryside. But what's the most frequent question that visitors ask forest rangers in the park? Do they ask, where does this trail go? Do they ask, how long does it take? Those are questions I would ask. Do they ask, do we need bug spray? No, they ask, where does the trail start? That's a good question. If you want to know where the trail to God starts, it starts with repentance. To repent is to restore our relationship with God. A relationship that's broken in many ways. Even on a daily basis in our lives. We try to go the right way, but we got on the trail at the wrong point, or we got on the wrong trail and it took us to the wrong place. We call that sin. Some 
religions teach that sin comes from incorrect thinking or ignorance. But the Bible says sin comes from our turning away, taking the wrong path, turning aside from the love of God. So the farther we move away from God, the closer we are to sin. What we need is to turn around and get back on the right path. God created this universe and everyone in it to know God, to reflect God's glory and God's love. People who know each other and spend time with each other start to reflect each other's character and attitudes. And John is saying the kingdom of heaven is near you. God's got a plan to restore this world to the original design of justice and mercy and peace. You're going to miss it if you don't line yourself up with God's thoughts. <clears throat> if you're thinking about something else, if you're trying to put on your best clothes and look good, instead of filling yourself with the spirit and thought of God, you're going to miss the greatest thing you could ever see. God in the flesh. Jesus the Messiah. So John the Baptist's message is like a road sign pointing at God's plan for humanity. Repent. Restore your relationship with God. <clears throat> Prepare for the Messiah and the coming of the kingdom by getting yourself on the right path. How do we do that? Well, the first sign of repentance is to acknowledge that we have a problem. Broken relationships can't be restored until we step up and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I sinned against you. That's true in any relationship, and it's, it's true in our relationship with God. <clears throat> Dean Chabot is a former neo-Nazi who left behind his old lifestyle of hate and violence to start a new life as a man of peace. As he turned himself around and changed his lifestyle, he realized he had a lot of hateful tattoos on his body. Another former white supremacist had left the movement and had paid for a plastic surgeon to take care of his tattoos. So he put up the money for, for Dean Chabot to remove his tattoos. In an interview on CBS News, Chabot said, the reason I got rid of those tattoos was to end my old life and to show that my new life would be different. I had to get the hate off my skin. Repentance acknowledges that we have a broken relationship with God. We may not have to get the hate off our skin, but we have to get the hate out of our heart. A young woman in Russia <clears throat> was a leader in the communist youth movement. <clears throat> she was raised an atheist, but at the age of 26, <clears throat> she and her best friend heard about Jesus, and they became Christians. She read the Bible, discovered what sin was, and it broke her heart to know that she'd rejected God. She'd rejected God's character. She'd rejected God's promises. She'd rejected God's purposes for her. She felt a terrible burden, a desperation to be cleansed, to be restored to God, but she didn't know how to do it. One day she walked into an Orthodox church and said she had to make a confession. The priest listened to her for a long time as she confessed her many sins. And the priest offered her advice. Through the act of confession, she was restored to God. From the nothingness of a meaningless existence, we came to the Father's house, into the church which became our paradise. We knew that with God, anything is possible. To that woman, confession opened the door to God's house. <clears throat> That's being restored to God. 
Repentance is about restoring the relationship. We have to acknowledge we have a problem, but then we bear the fruit of repentance. Joy and peace. That's what John the Baptist said, bear the fruit of repentance. It's joy and peace. We may think, oh, that's just part of the message of Christmas. We have those, those warm feelings at Christmas time. Joy and peace. Joy to the world. But these feelings are motivated entirely by love. That's what's so great about the Christmas season. We think about love and shaking off our old ways and our old feelings and getting back to God while there's still time to experience that love. <clears throat> Festo Kivangeri is a former bishop of the Anglican Church of Uganda. Festo was raised in a pagan family, but he became a follower of Jesus. His ministry was so influential, <clears throat> he is sometimes called the Billy Graham of Africa. Festo described his life before becoming a Christian as a spinning top. In other words, he was always going through the same motions all the time, over and over. I worked, I played, I worked. I worked, I played, I worked. I was running faster and faster, thinking if I went faster, my life would be better. But it was wrong. A friend shared the message of Jesus, and he prayed to Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And he said, God smashed my heart open and introduced me to the living reality of Jesus Christ who entered in. And my top stopped spinning. He gave me a direction that will last through eternity. God smashed my heart open. Sounds like a country song. But that's what happens when we know who God is and we know how much God loves us. That's what happens when we repent. It smashes our heart open and we fall in love with God all over again. That's our message on the second Sunday in Advent. John the Baptist may be scary at times. The kingdom of God is near. Jesus is coming and he's really mad. Um, but God has a plan to restore the whole world to the right relationship with God. So don't just go through the motions this Christmas season. Don't just spin around like a top doing the same old things. Don't just make an outward show of your religion. Turn back to God. Confess your sins. Get, get the garbage out of your life and bear the fruit of joy and peace that comes from knowing your love by God. Amen.